The Old State House Museum in Little Rock tells the story of Arkansas's history. We caught up with curator Joellen Mack for a preview of an upcoming exhibit there on Civil War battle flags. We are located at the collection management storage facility for the Old State House Museum in Little Rock, Arkansas. So welcome. Thank you. What do we have behind you? This is what we call our mobile storage unit and we have stacks. We have everything from uh, in our collection from an electric chair, two electric chairs, sure. to uh, Johnny Cash's guitar. So this is where the kind of the heart of our collection at any given time there's less than uh, two percent of things on exhibit. So this is where we keep them. This is a controlled environment. Uh, the temperature and humidity and light levels are all controlled to uh, make sure the artifacts are safe. And this is one of the electric chairs? These are two of the electric chairs. The uh, older one here is what they called Sparky One, and 166 inmates were executed in that chair. And this one, uh, only one was executed because lethal injection came in shortly after this one was constructed. So we have a large, um, collection of our prison system and uh, a few years ago we had a great exhibit called Badges, Bandits and Bars and we featured a lot of things from the prison. Very interesting, colorful history. That is. So we have our uh, first families, uh, the things that are not on exhibit. We have everything from uh, Chelsea's dress when she was young to um, current Governor BB things that uh, we rotate out and we have our paintings and artwork, a lot of textiles, we have our quilts. Um, this is just the treasure trove of where things live. All right, now we're here today to take a look and talk about your new exhibit on Civil War yes, flags. Yes, we have a new exhibit that's going to open May the 4th and it's called Wall of Fire. And what this exhibit will do is examine the um, Civil War in Arkansas. And so the ladders are in the way, but we'll scoot this by. And one of the, the main feature of the exhibit will be our Civil War battle flag collection. They're kept safe in this flag cabinet that was specially designed for them where the air can rotate and it has a char charcoal filtering system that keeps the air pure. And the reason why we keep them like this is the worst thing in the world for flags or any textiles really is gravity. Gravity, light, and dirt. Mm -hmm. And that will just uh, destroy a textile over time. Right. So what this cabinet does, it allows the flags to what we call rest. And so they're laying flat in this safe system. And then we can just bring them out. So these will all go on exhibit. OK. Uh, we'll bring all of our flags out, and they'll be up for 11 months and we're having special cases built where they'll slant. Mm -hmm. Because if they hang flat on a wall, gravity will pull it down and that's very hard on the flags. Right. So we're having special cases built. The flags haven't been on exhibit in about nine years. So this is a, this will be a great exhibit and very popular. Oh, interesting. And what is this one here? This particular flag is probably our most popular. And there's a wonderful story behind this flag. In 1905, uh, the United States government began to return flags captured in battle to southern states. This was kind of a goodwill gesture, mm -hmm. in other words. And so, as you can imagine, there were no computer databases to keep up with these flags. And so, a lot of flags were mis-ID'd. Mm -hmm. they, they we're given a War Department number, as you see up here. This one is 227. But they were mis-ID'd. And this particular flag, this was an Arkansas flag. Eight units were under it, under General Patrick Claiborne. But it was sent to Alabama. And so since 1905, it was 
it stayed in the archives at uh, Alabama Archives and History Museum. Curator Bob Bradley contacted me in 2000 and said, I think we have finally ID through scholarly research this flag and it belongs in Arkansas. And so they went before their board, showed all the, uh, the work that they had done, the scholarly research, and very generously they decided to donate the flag to us. So in October of 2001, um, I went and picked up this flag and brought it back to Arkansas. This is the third Confederate we immediately, it had never been conserved, so we immediately uh, began raising money uh, to have the flag conserved. On average, uh, a flag of this size is probably going to cost around $12,000 to conserve. Mm. And in this economy, and museums in particular, that is just a very difficult amount of money to raise. But people were very generous, and we raised enough money to uh, have this conserved, and so this will be one of the centerpieces for our upcoming exhibit. You mentioned the Third Confederate. A little bit of background on them. Um, there were two units from Mississippi and eight units from Arkansas that served under this flag. Okay. And if you'll see, what they would typically do is they would put the battles that they fought in on the flags. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, this unit or this command was very, that regiment was very, very busy. And they were at some very uh, important, heavy, heavy battles uh, Murfreesboro, Chickamauga, Ringo Gap. Mm -hmm. So this was actually captured in 1864. And um, I believe it was an Ohio unit that captured this particular flag. And then it was turned over to the War Department. Gotcha. What about this one over here? This one is uh, a, what's called a hardy pattern. So is that one. But this is a typical hardy pattern. Hardy pattern, they were white, usually had a white border around it with a blue field. And then in the center, kind of a crescent moon or a moon shape was usually where the uh, units, the sixth and seventh in this particular one, uh, would they would designate the units in there. And this one, once again, it too was at Ringo Gap and at Tunnel Hill in Tennessee, but more importantly, it was at Shiloh. Another flag that um, has a very interesting history is this one. It's Hart's Battery. And it's, it's, first of all, you can see it's a very, very large flag. Has some beautiful, beautiful work on it. This flag was returned to Missouri, uh, but it was actually an Arkansas flag. It's in the first national pattern, uh, has the two cross cannons, uh, which uh, indicate artillery. But if you'll notice something very interesting about this flag, this is the back of the flag. And that's the reason why people think, why did you do the flag that way? Well, this is all that's left of the flag. It was the same on both sides, but unfortunately, just age and, and uh, wear and tear, the, first, the front side of the flag did not survive. Now, in 2009, uh, we came to an agreement with the state of Missouri. We had one of their flags, and so we exchanged this flag for two Arkansas flags. So in 2009, we brought home two flags of Arkansas that hadn't been in the state since the war. This and then an Arkansas 6th and 7th. Um, it was very generous of Missouri to go into this agreement with us and we needed to raise money for two flags and so people donated money but we also applied for a grant from Save America's Treasures and we were awarded a grant and so we were able to conserve these two flags and they just recently came back to the state from the conservation in West Virginia and so when this exhibit opens in May this will be the first time that the public will be able to see these flags on exhibit since the war. This is interesting. One of the questions I have for you as you pull it out is why are flags so popular? I mean, it seems to be something that a lot of people connect with. People are very connected to flags because 
when these, you have to stop and think, when these young men were out on the battlefield, this was their honor. This was their badge of honor. And it was a great honor, actually, to be designated the flag carrier, the person that, that carried these flags into battle. And you hear all of these stories about, you know, the flag carrier was, was shot and fell and, and someone scooped up the flag to keep it from hitting the ground and to carry on. And mm -hmm. that actually did happen. It was a great honor to carry the flag. It was very personal. Some of these flags were made from women, by women in their hometowns. And so it was a very personal, personal thing. This flag, which is another first national pattern, is a great example of what was going on. They used whatever material they have. We don't have any documentation, but if you look at the pattern in this flag, one has to wonder, okay, did that come from a boat of fabric? Or was this a, a drapery? Was this a table linen? What did these women take to make this flag? And um, it, it's a great source of pride. And so today, that source of pride carries on. Um, I always tell people that I have the best job in the world because as curator, um, my duty, my job is to care for these artifacts, to make sure that they're not only in the proper environment and maintained, but that we continue to do research to find out, what about, give me a story, give me a story with this flag, or give me a story with something that we can tell the public. Um, we can't put the artifacts all out at any given time, and so we have an online database that we're real proud of, that we continue to try to update, and where people, we have people in Ireland that love our battle flag collection, and so they can go online and, and see our flag collection. Um, my, my job is, is the caretaker of this. Um, it, it's the greatest job that anybody could want. Uh, I'm a history geek, and so it's just, it's wonderful, it really is. Uh, it's a big responsibility to be the caretaker of all of these items, but I have a great staff, a great crew, and a director that really understands artifacts and collection. And he has been supportive with, for us from day one. And, you know, if we need new equipment, if we need something conserved, he goes out there and tries to get the money for us to do it. So we're very fortunate with our director and deputy director and our entire staff. They mm -hmm. get it. They right. get history. So what happens now between now and when the collection goes on display? <laughs> what happens now between now and when it goes on is, is insanity is basically what it is. Uh, my staff is busy because we have already decided what artifacts will go on exhibit, and so they have to do paperwork. Whenever you move an artifact from one place to another, we have to document it for insurance and just for our record keeping. So they're busy uh, in the databases doing that. Um, we have to take down an exhibit. We just had a, an exhibit on why commemorate the war, so that has to come down first, which we'll do in a couple of weeks. Put those artifacts back, into their home and let them rest. And then our uh, maintenance crew will go in and paint and uh, get the galleries ready because it's five galleries. It's gonna be a huge exhibit. And uh, then about mid-April, a company will come in that will help us install the flags mm -hmm. and they've built special frames for them. So we'll install the flags and that's a big deal to move the flags because we can't just put them in a truck and do it. We have to do this proper and by museum standards and procedures and what's best for the flags. Mm -hmm. um, so we've, we've hired someone to help us with that. And then the final week we'll install um, the other artifacts that will be on exhibit and then we open. <laughs> so there's a lot to do. You know, we have text panels to proof and print. We have um, uh, labels for all the artifacts. You know, people love to see tons of artifacts on exhibit, but we have to have labels made for all of those. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot that goes into exhibits, and I don't think people quite realize how much. 
Well, good luck but with it's the next fun. couple of weeks. Thank you. And thanks for taking us behind the scenes here. Absolutely, absolutely. And we uh, encourage everyone to come see the exhibit. It opens May the 4th, Wall of Fire. For more information, go to oldstatehouse.com.